time to turn to the economy section for our GMS focus topic. South Korea logged a trade surplus for two straight months while inflation cooled remaining in the 2% range. Now, on the surface, it may seem as though Korea is performing quite well amid unfavorable external conditions. But if we examine figures more closely, things aren't looking so bright. So for an in-depth analysis on where the Korean economy stands now and perhaps more importantly where it's headed next, we're joined by Dr. Yang jin Sok, economics professor at the Catholic University of Korea. Good morning, Professor Yang. Good morning. And thank you for joining us. Uh, Korea reported a trade surplus in July, staying in the black for two straight months. But the surplus came as imports posted a steeper decline than exports, resulting in a recession-type surplus. So can you first tell us more about this observation? Okay, well, the uh, Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy, citing customs figures, uh, said that for the month of July, exports were $50.3 billion, imports were $48.7 billion. Uh, so uh, compared to July 2022, exports were down 16.5% and imports were down 25.4%. Uh, and there was a trade surplus of 1.6 billion U.S. dollars for a second month in a row. Now, customs uh, measures the uh, trade account, uh, which measures goods flowing in and out of borders. This uh, trade account had been in deficit from December 2021 to May 2023, with the exception of a very slight surplus in February 2022. But now uh, we are getting back to hopefully a streak of surplus. This is the second month, as you mentioned. Uh, and the uh, reason for the surplus basically is that imports fell more than exports, uh, thanks in large part to a fall in energy prices. So as you mentioned, it is a recession surplus where both exports and imports fall, uh, but the trade account ends up being in a surplus. Mm. Uh, now, it was always expected that the value of exports and imports would have fallen this year because last year we had those sky-high energy prices. The prices uh, uh, not only raised the value of imports of imported oil, but also uh, the uh, Korea's exports of petrochemicals and petroleum products, the product, uh, price of those products were also sky high due to the sky high oil prices. Uh, so believe it or not, even though we had a massive trade deficit last year, the uh, value of Korean exports had been the highest in Korean uh, history. Obviously, so was the uh, imports. And import values were even higher, so that's why we had uh, those uh, trade uh, deficits mm. last year. Mm. So uh, because the inflation is coming down globally, it was very, always unlikely that the uh, value of exports and imports would increase this year. It was always more likely that both of those values would fall. Uh, but a p- uh, problem is the uh, exports have fallen faster than we expected. Hmm. Uh, and imports uh, have not fallen as much as we hoped for, and it had the uh, account had been in a deficit for the uh, first few months of the year. But hopefully now we have gone back to a streak of surpluses. Uh, what is somewhat worrying, though, is that even though the value of exports and imports have fallen, I was personally kind of hoping that at least the volume, uh, the amount of uh, exports and imports, if the value doesn't go up, at least hopefully the volume would have gone up, Mm. uh, but that didn't happen. Uh, The uh, volume of exports had fallen as well, and the uh, decline in volume as well as value is uh, occurring across all Korea's major trading partners in July, China, ASEAN, U.S., EU, Central and South America, Middle East, Korean exports to all those regions fell, even though uh, in terms of value, the uh, exports to uh, ASEAN uh, was the third best July on record. Uh, Exports to U.S. and EU was the uh, second best July on record. So in terms of value, yes, it's down from last year, but it's not doing too badly. Uh, and in terms of items, automobile exports had gone up 15%. It's mm. the uh, highest July on record. Uh, 
Uh, general machinery exports had gone up by 3.2% compared to last July. Uh, that's the uh, second best July on record. Uh, but, of course, the uh, basic problem in terms of industry is that semiconductor exports are still lackluster. Mm-hmm. It's down 33.6%. And because uh, exports are reported in uh, value, uh, this is not surprising, but petroleum product exports are down 42%, and petro- petrochemical exports are down by 24.5%. Uh, so uh, that explains some of the reasons why we're in this sort of a recessionary mm. uh, trade surplus. And one other thing I should mention about the trade account, uh, Korea reports the trade account every 10 days, and up to uh, July 20th, uh, the uh, trade was in deficit. So we made it up in just 10 days. Mm. Uh, so that does tell you how quickly things can turn around. Okay. I also want to ask you a question about the Korean economy at large. It, it grew just 0.6% in the second quarter. Some pundits are saying it's technically a minus growth as a growth leaned on the recession type trade surplus we just mentioned while spending and investment remained rather weak. Help us better understand, how does Korea's second quarter growth compare to other major economies, Dr. Young? Okay, well, uh, the reason that we're saying that this is a recessionary uh, type of growth Mm. is that, well, if we break down the GDP, well, GDP, the uh, uh, formal definition is how much does Korea produce, uh, but because what what's produced has to be bought by someone, you can also measure demand uh, using the uh, GDP figures. Now, uh, when you're measuring GDP by demand, you can break it down to consumption, private consumption, plus uh, investment, uh, plus government expenditure, plus exports, and minus imports. And it's this minus component that was so big that it drove uh, the uh, GDP into a growth because, well, a minus of a minus is a plus. Mm. Uh, but virtually all components in that demand uh, fell. Uh, so consumption fell by 0.1% over last quarter. Uh, government expenditure fell by 1.9% over the last quarter. Construction by uh, 0.3% fallen by 0.3%. Facilities investment or business investment fell by uh, 0.2%. And exports fell by uh, 1.8%. Uh, but because imports fell by 4.8% as well, uh, once you add these, all these together, uh, you had a p- uh, positive uh, 0.6. You can say uh, that a lot of uh, spending, which was spent on imports last year, uh, was switched to domestically produced goods, so that may be good news, but still, uh, the fall in consumption, investment, as well as uh, exports, uh, it basically uh, shows you that spending is becoming weaker, so Korea has a very weak economy, at least when it's considered from the demand side, mm. and that does not look uh, good for Korea's near uh, future in terms of economic growth. Mm. Um, now, comparing the results with the United States, the uh, United States second quarter had 2.4% annualized growth. That's a growth that w- uh, would be if the same second quarter growth lasted for entire 12 months. Uh, so uh, to compare it to Korean figures, you need to divide that by four, and that brings you to 0.6%. So at least on the outside, the uh, growth figures does seem the same as Korea, but if you look at the same consumption, investment, and so on, uh, the consumption in U.S. GDP grew actually very strongly at 2.4%. Investment grew uh, strongly at 5.7%. Mm. Um, so uh, and so uh, the, the U.S. domestic economy grew very strongly, uh, but interestingly, Exports fell by 10.8% and imports fell by 7.8%. Uh, so it, uh, the uh, U.S. does seem like it has a very strong domestic economy, mm-hmm. uh, but they're not selling as much overseas. And that just sh- uh, shows a similarity with Korea. Uh, the uh, global demand may not be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, 
uh, also the U.S. economy seems to be in a stronger place because in the uh, for the first quarter growth, it was originally thought that they grew by 1.1 percent, but the uh, revision that came out with the uh, second quarter growth it showed that U.S. grew by 2.0 percent annualized uh, in the first quarter. That's 0.5 percent quarter to quarter. So they're continuing on that path of very mm. strong growth. Uh, and the uh, U.S. inflation is coming down. Uh, the uh, job numbers are very good, though it is slowing down compared to uh, last few months. Uh, and hourly wages are uh, 4.4%, increasing by 4.4% year on year, 0.4% for mm-hmm. the month, which is much higher than the current inflation rate. Uh, so the U.S. is having a very strong economy. Uh, now, uh, comparing that to, say, China, which mm-hmm. is the second uh, largest uh, economy in terms of GDP, uh, the uh, growth rate for China for the quarter was 0.8 percent. That seems to be slightly larger than Korea and uh, the uh, United States. Uh, their 12-month growth was 6.3 percent. But this was actually a disappointing result for them because they're still a developing country, and developing countries usually have a much higher growth rate. And China, uh, this is very slow by their historical standards for over the last 20 years or so, and it was basically underperforming. Uh, Even though the 12-month growth rate was 6.3%, the analysts had been expected 7.2 to 7.3%. Now... Their retail sales and industrial production is still high. It came in slightly above what the uh, uh, analyst expected, 3.1% and 4.4% uh, uh, respectively. Uh, but it's again, it's exports seems to be the problem. Mm-hmm. They don't. Uh, they they reported that for month of June, exports had gone down by 12.4%, and in May uh, it had gone down by 7.5 percent uh so it seems to be the exports which are a problem Mm -hmm. uh but it's also creating uh problems in employment the china's youth youth unemployment uh that's 16 to 24 year olds it's hit whopping 21.3 percent that's a new record and urban unemployment rate is 5.2 percent uh and the problem with china in addition to their uh slowing growth is the very large uh, debt, especially for their regional economies, state-owned enterprises, and various construction and housing firms, Mm. which makes it very difficult to start any kind of fiscal policies because, well, they owe to the uh, entities, especially regional governments, they owe too much money to uh, start spending freely. Uh, Now, the central government apparently does have enough money to start a fiscal policy, but they don't want to make this debt problem worse. Mm -hmm. So it's a question on whether they'll start a uh, uh, stimulatory expansionary fiscal policy, uh, which may run up more debt. Uh, the thing is, uh, bringing things back to Korea, Professor Young, uh, we were banking on, it seems, China's reopening for a stronger bounce back. And it, it wasn't as well as I suppose we expected. But yet, yeah, the central government remains quite confident that things will look up in the latter half of this year. Uh, some financial authorities point out that semiconductor and automobile exports are picking up and Korea will see a moderate recovery if that is a temporary factor that drag down domestic spending in the first half are also resolved. So would Korea's exports and GDP growth rebound in the third and fourth quarters based on your expertise? Okay, well, I understand the argument and there's a lot of controversy, but uh, my personal reading is that it's going to be difficult to have higher growth uh, in the second half. Uh, We're probably not going to a negative growth, but it's hard to see how the economy will do a lot better. And the reason is that we've been counting on uh, recovery in the semiconductor exports. And China's uh, imports of Korean semiconductors, well, they're not increasing very much. And Korea sells semiconductors to China, which China then uses to make products that they export to other countries. And as we just mentioned, 
Uh, China's exports are down considerably. It's not clear whether they will recover because of the uh, global slowdown. Mm-hmm. Now, the uh, semiconductor industry last year was also hoping that in the second half of this year, uh, the uh, semiconductor industry was supposed to have started selling a, a new chips for servers. So there will be a massive new investment in server tech, servers, and that would also require more newer memory chips, which would help uh, the market recover. But because of the high uh, interest rates, and because uh, after the uh, shutdown and lockdown, the demand for IT services are going down, mm. it's not clear now whether that uh, massive investment in servers will take place. And if that doesn't take place, then any recovery that we'll see in the semiconductor sector uh, will be moderate at best. Uh, the uh, good news for Korea, though, is that the automobile exports are recovering, uh, but Will automobiles be enough to just uh, bring the Korean economy back? Uh, I think uh, it's not going to be enough to have a a really massive turnaround for the entire Korean economy Mm -hmm. and even for the automobile uh, exports uh, because the uh, global economy does seem to be in a slowdown. Uh, I don't know if this uh, current high demand for Korean automobiles will continue. Uh, meanwhile, Korea's inflation cooled last month when prices growing at 2.3%. The drop was mainly attributed to the sharp drop in oil prices. But now oil prices are going back up, while price of vegetables are also expected to soar further due to the record level rainfall this year. What is your inflation outlook for the latter half of this year, Dr. Young? And how would it impact the BOK's benchmark interest rates going forward? Okay, well, the uh, food prices are definitely going to go up. It's not just because of the uh, current uh, bad weather. Uh, pr- food prices always go up before a month uh, before Chuseok. Mm. And in this month, uh, in, on this year, Chuseok is coming on September. So we should see prices, we should have seen prices rising from August, even if we didn't have bad weather. Mm. Uh, but obviously, things are going to get worse because of the uh, current bad weather. And we should remember that bad weather is not just limited to Korea this time. It's lim- uh, it's around the world. So mm-hmm. we may see global uh, food prices rise. And this might get worse because Russia has said that they will no longer allow exports of foodstuff from Ukraine to go without ha- uh, being uh, hassled by the uh, Russian Navy. Uh, so we may see global food rise as well. Now, oil prices... Uh, Yes, they may uh, rise a little bit more, uh, but it may not rise as much as some people fear. The biggest reason behind the current uh, rise in oil prices is that the U.S. refineries are not working because of the hot weather. So people expect that once uh, weather cools down, the U.S. refineries start working again, and that should contribute to lowering oil prices. Now, uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia have cut down production about 5% of the global demand, trying to keep the uh, oil prices up. Uh, But they have done that several times last year and this year. Didn't really work very well, uh, partially because uh, the uh, demand for oil has come down quite a bit because uh, uh, they believe that the uh, global economy will be slowing down. And this is a personal uh, reading on my part. Uh, but part of the reason why the oil prices have risen so much in the last month, it went from about $67 at the end of June to about $82 currently. In addition to those two factors that I've talked about, uh, remember that we had the uh, decline in U.S. credit rating mm-hmm. that may have sent some money-seeking investment from U.S. bonds to other areas like uh, the oil. Uh, oil market. So uh, I think in a few months, we will see uh, oil prices going back to somewhere in the uh, 70 to eight, somewhere between 70 to $80 level. Uh, but we may still see a little bit of rise in the oil prices until the weather comes down. So uh, inflation basically all comes down to the weather. And that's probably going to keep inflation higher than it was for Korea in August. Mm-hmm. September and possibly up to October. Mm. Thank you very much, Dr. Nyar, for your insights today. We'll speak to you again next week. Thank you.
If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.